Hi there everybody. I wanted to do a video on solubility and ionic equations. I'll probably do several of these because I've had some requests. So many general chemistry students are presented with this challenge where they are given an equation that has ionic compounds and they are asked to basically complete the equation and then show what's called the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation and there's a lot of work that can go into these equations so this first video is going to be a breakdown there will be a little bit more hand holding in this video than there will be in some of the others as I continue to sort of build you up and uh, attempt to get you able to solve these on your own so the first thing you can see that I have up here is the solubility and ionic equations table so uh, the table that's utilized here, this you'll find this in most textbooks, undergraduate textbooks. You could Google it and find one online. Um, but most of them will be similar or be the same. And what you're going to see here are compounds that are soluble and then compounds that are insoluble. So for the soluble compounds, you can see uh, what you have over here. Uh, for instance, nitrates. So anything that has a nitrate ion will be soluble and there are no exceptions to that so that means anytime I find any sort of cation attached to the nitrate anion it will always solubilize into aqueous ions so that's the general idea of how you use this table now sometimes there's exceptions so for instance if you look at the halides chlorine bromine and iodine each of the halogens has exceptions to the rule here so for instance if I find silver if I find the dimercury ion or if I find lead attached to chlorine, bromine, or iodine, I would expect that to be an insoluble compound. So that's how the exceptions work. You first go to the soluble category. If you find something in there, you check to see if there's exceptions. If there is an exception, it would be insoluble then. And then the reverse is true for the insoluble portion. So I go to the insoluble ionic compound portion of the table. I find my carbonates, my hydroxides, my sulfides, my phosphates. Um, I'll just note here that some tables will vary. You'll see some that actually include the uh, alkali metals up here from group one. And then sometimes you'll see them just included as exceptions. So your table may vary. However, you should still be able to utilize it properly. All right. So for the insoluble category, let's say that I had uh, potassium carbonate, right? Carbonate is generally insoluble, but compounds that have NH4 plus or any of the alkali metal cations and potassium is a row one alkali metal cation then it's an exception so potassium carbonate would be soluble whereas some other cation that's here let's say copper um, carbonate would not be expected to be soluble that would stay as insoluble so the exceptions on the table are going to counteract whatever main grouping you're in whether you're insoluble or insoluble so that being said let's take a look at the equation that i have here all right Calcium chloride, which is aqueous, goes to silver nitrate, which is also aqueous. All right, and those two, you combine them and you get calcium nitrate and silver chloride. Now, notice that silver chloride is solid. In future videos, okay, you're going to practice giving the products and predicting their solubility. That's an important task. You need to be able to do that, but I want to walk you through this. So how do we know that each of these are aqueous and or solid? So for calcium chloride, I go to the chlorine portionality of the table here. So let's highlight it a little bit just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so when I get ready to look here, I go to the chlorine portionality and I say, is calcium one of the exceptions? No, it's not. And since it's not, I would expect calcium chloride to be soluble because I find chlorine under the soluble category on this table here. Then I go over to silver nitrate. Nitrate is up here in the soluble category, no exceptions. So anything with a nitrate is expected to be aqueous. It's going to be soluble. So again, AQ. Applying that same exact rule, calcium nitrate must also be aqueous or soluble because again, nitrates, no matter what they're attached to, will be soluble. And then I have the chloride. Well, the chloride is normally soluble. However, one of the exceptions is silver chloride. So Ag plus, right, which is what's resulting in AgCl down here. 
So that becomes solid because it's an exception to one of the soluble uh, portions of the table. And so that's where we end up with the rankings down here of aqueous, 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 solid. All right, so what I'm saying is in future uh, attempts at these problems, it will be your job to not only predict the compounds down here, but you will also need to state whatever physical state they're in, aqueous or solid, when we do these precipitate reactions, all right? So the next thing, and the most important thing once you have this set up, is you need to balance the equation. And when you balance the equation, you need to make sure that that is completely set before you move on, because if you don't set it up properly, you will have issues as you continue to attempt your complete ionic equation and your net ionic equation. All right, so this portionality up here is known as the molecular ionic equation. All right, so this is the type you would normally see if you were in a chemistry class where the entire molecules are bound up together and you're just told their state. This is the molecular ionic equation. Now, what I want to do eventually is create a complete ionic equation and then a net ionic equation. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to balance this reaction here. So let's take a look at how I would balance this. I have one calcium on the left and I have one on the right. So, so far, so good. The chlorines, I've got two of them on the left and I have one on the right. So I would need a two in front of the AgCl here in order to get two Cls, right? So now I come over to the silver, I have Ag, I have two Ag over here, so that means I need a two over here. And when you get to the polyatomics, I would suggest you treat nitrate as a group. So don't view it as nitrogen and oxygen, view it as NO3 groups. It's gonna help you with balancing, all right? So I've got two NO3 groups here on the reactant side, and I have two NO3 groups over on the product side. So this should be balanced at this point if you go back through and check. So now I'm ready to proceed forward. So the next goal here, since I have a balanced molecular ionic equation, is that I wanna shoot for a complete ionic equation, All right? Now the difference here is the complete ionic equation is going to utilize the actual ions. So anything that's aqueous will break apart into its ionic state. And you're not just going to put aqueous for the entire molecule, you'll put aqueous for the representative ions that would be in solution. So in order to complete this, here's what we do. Calcium chloride is aqueous, so we need to break it apart into its counterpieces. So the first thing I would expect is that I'm going to have a calcium. Now calcium is going to be aqueous, and that calcium has a charge associated with it when it's an ion, that charge would be two plus, all right? So if you have trouble with this, you should go and check out videos on predicting charges for ionic compounds or predicting charges of elements and things like that, all right? Uh, so once we have that, here's where a lot of students get confused. A lot of students will want to put Cl2 down here, and that is incorrect because what we have is two chlorines, but they're going to break apart as individual chlorides, Cl minus ions, and those would be aqueous. Now the key here is that I, for every calcium chloride that I dissociate, I have two chlorides that dissociate from that calcium. So there are two Cl minus aqueous ions, all right? So that's where the two goes there. A lot of students get confused. They keep the subscripts there. When you dissociate, those subscripts, okay, for the chlorine are not going to be there. Now for the nitrate, they are because the nitrate is a polyatomic anion. So I continue forward. I say I've got two silver, so two Ag. Silver has a plus charge. If you had trouble with that one, just remember that NO3 has a minus charge and they're in a one-to-one -one ratio here, right? So I then have NO3 minus, and I have two of those because again, I have a coefficient of two in front of here. So I have two NO3 minus, and I just realized I should be putting in, let me backtrack here just for a second, because I do want to put in aqueous, right? So don't forget that for the silver, and then 
my 2NO3 minus, that would also be aqueous. So this is the reactant side for the complete ionic equation. Now, anything that's solid will stay solid. So here I'm going to have 2AgCl solid. And in the complete ionic equation, only things that are aqueous will dissociate into ions. Things that are solid are going to be insoluble, so they stay as a solid precipitate. This is not going to break apart, right? And then, after that, I continue forward. I say, I have the calcium here. So the calcium, I only have one of them. That would be aqueous 2 plus, like before, plus... I'm going to put this one down here because I'm running out of a little space. And the nitrate, again, I have two of these here. Because remember that I'm going to distribute the two here to the entire nitrate right there. Okay? So if I take a look at this, I now need to find what's called spectator ions. And spectator ions, just like a sports game, right? Spectators are people who observe but do not participate. And so a spectator ion is an ion that is present on both sides of the equation but has not participated in the reaction. That's where the name comes from when we say spectator. So I have two NO3 minuses and I have one calcium two plus. And you need to realize that the only way these values are going to be on each side of the equation is if they are balanced properly, okay? And you have your spectator ions have to be present in equal amounts in order for this to work. So once I'm done with that, and it is very common to show crossing out of spectator ions, you don't have to, okay? But a lot of students, they find it helpful so that when they get ready to do the net ionic equation, it's already sort of condensed down to what they need here. All right, so for the net ionic equation, I'm now going to take I, I personally write the cations first, so I say it's going to be 2Ag+. plus. This is coming from the complete. I'm dragging down what actually the net reaction, right, minus the spectators, plus 2Cl minus aqueous is going to give me my solid, which would be 2AgCl solid. This would be a precipitate reaction because I'm creating a solid compound from aqueous. All right, now this is already balanced and it should be balanced if you did the initial balancing. You have two silver ions, two chloride ions in order to create two silver chloride molecules. So there you go. That is an example of molecular ionic equations, complete ionic equations, and net ionic equations. So as always, thank you so much for all the support and love that you guys give this channel. Um, if you have any comments or questions, I will be happy to respond to them. And I hope to continue some more in this type of lecture. Supporting the channel is always helpful. Just by watching these videos, you're supporting the channel. Uh, if you like and subscribe, that also helps as well. So I will see you guys for future videos. And thank you so much for learning with us.